What the? <laughs> <laughs> I am ready to go today. <laughs> Hola. Slam dunk, are you ready to meet me? Bonjour. Ni hao. Salut. Guten Tag. Moi. Privet. Hey. <laughs> I what can't take you. You should be. It looks like you should be saying good evening, sir. How are you? Hey, look, like, let me drop down a bit. I'm, there we go. Now you can see, right? So there we go. I've got the hat going on because last week's episode. James completely stood me up by wearing a shirt, a tie, a waistcoat. So I thought, hang on, I'm not having this. Um, as we joked about um, being normally, me being one who is the more, I suppose, well-dressed of the two of us. He's obviously come today as a um, substitute teacher. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'd, I, thought, I thought I'd play up to the, uh, the whole narrative of that, you know. So I've even gone one more, right? I know we joked about this in our season last, uh, one of the shows last season where we're talking about do people ever wear their wedding gear? So apart from the waistcoat and the, the tie, these aren't, these are, these are new additions. But I thought I'd dig out the, the jacket, which has got tails, the top hat. But I, I also bought something, right? Hello. Oh, jeez. Hello, I see... I see. You. I don't know why I'm talking like that. For anybody mon- who's listening to this, I tried to, to put this. a monocle on, right? But it's too big. It's like I look like a, I look like the bad guy from Indiana Jones now. So I'm going to. You look like the Monopoly Man. No, I don't. That's exactly what you look like. You look like the little Monopoly Man. <laughs> so no, for anybody, I look, any- like, I look like I'm looking ready to go to the races. Ah, uh-huh. it looks like you're looking to go somewhere. Anybody that's listening to this and can't see what we're describing, Oliver has basically turned up today in top hat and tails. Yes, exactly. You say that, that the dicky bow and the waist jacket are new additions. Why the hell would you buy those? Well, the dicky bow was because I went to an event and it needed a, it said black tie or um, bow tie. And I don't really like wearing black ties. They feel like a penguin. So I, I bought this one in a bit of a burgundy. And I've got a nice blue here. And actually, if you compare the two colours, claret and blue, it's homage to my favourite home team, football team, Aston Villa. So uh, the monocle, the monocle is just you don't wear glasses anyway. Really, no, I know. Well, neither do you, but you try to. Um, I do. So I so I pulled this up here, and uh, yeah. So I, I thought I'd, I'd just put the monocle there. I like right. That. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna. It's a real waste of money. That it doesn't even fit in my eye. It looks like I'm just trying to yeah make someone. Well, there you go. You've got a competition now, haven't you? There we go. So anyway, so yeah, <laughs> welcome everybody to Normal Not Normal uh, with me, Oliver Phelps. And, and me, James the, Phelps. And of course, James Phelps right there. So yes, yeah, so the whole reason for the dress today is because I felt showed up last week. So I thought I will make the extra effort for our good friend, Ivana Lynch, today. So joining us today is Ivana Lynch. And Evie came into the Potters on the fifth movie. As you probably guessed, a lot of us cast members all get on very well, but Ivana is such a lovely person. It's hard to meet anyone that has a bad word to say against her. Very, very warm, very, very welcoming to everybody. But also, she was the fountain of knowledge of all things Harry Potter, especially when we're filming, which is always great to do. So today, we're going to see whether Ivana is normal or she's not normal or, or whatever the hell normal means. And exactly what her terminology of normal is as well, because I've got to be honest that, well, when we were filming, Evie was always somebody who would, well, or even afterwards, if you were doing Q and A's with people, you wouldn't either want to be on the stage at the same time as Evie because she would correct you if you got something wrong. Um, but if you knew that you were going out, you could always ask her her question, like, what do you think about this? And she'd fill your knowledge a bit more in terms of the answers that you needed. So she was definitely helping for that. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be looking, uh, well, really looking forward to be able to talk to Evie today. But, James, in the meantime, what have you been up to this week? Uh, whatever. I, do you know, I've started boxing. Hey? There you go. I've started, not actually in a ring fighting somewhere. I was going to say, bo- yeah. I've been boxing training. As a form right, okay. of exercise. So I normally That's start... That's tiring. That is tiring. It is. So I, I normally start my day about six o'clock doing yoga and then I'm in the gym at seven. Uh, basically, I've got a lot of energy. And then in the in an evening, uh, twice a week, 
I go and I have um, an hour of boxing training. So whether that be skipping, doing a load of pad work, doing um, going on, on that, a, ball, a bag is that, or something. Is, it, is that like one-on-one or just something you've been doing on your own? No, there's a, there's a couple of us who have been doing it, um, who I play golf with actually, but we, we're all socially distancing. So it's a bit weird, but fortunately a ring is kind of the perfect distance to stay apart aside from everybody. But it is, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of boxing anyway, but it's quite nice being uh, able to learn the sweet science of uh, how to stand and all that kind of stuff. So that's been very, very fun. What have you been up to? Apart from dressing like the fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, hey, I see it. <laughs> I see it on my reel. We, we keep it like this. Um, no, I think it's been just a case of, yeah, this week's been quite odd. My boiler went at home. Where did it go? So, it went for a walk. Well, the CPU decided to pack in for one thing. So what basically meant there was no hot water or anything for five days until we, they had to get the part flown in from Germany to fix it. So it Is that why you way. ran out of clothes? So now you're wearing this? I've been going through everything because, yeah, because I couldn't be bothered to dry anything. So no, I've been, uh, as for those watching and listening, like I've already said, you know, I'm doing this because last week you tried to show me up. So I wanted to really outdo it. So hopefully this puts an end to any dress up that we will be doing. But actually, yeah, I wanted to get this hat out because I haven't worn it in ages. I had it all made up from a lovely little place in New York City many years ago. So yes, I'll keep it. I'll put that on George's head, actually. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait there, wait there. Wow, he's really good. Actually, while while Oliver's gone, I've got a quick did you know for today. So I'm only, I'll give two, I'll give two did you knows for today's one. So did you know, uh, hodophobia is people who are afraid of travelling. So if you're hodophobic, you're I don't know if you can be hodophobic, but if you're <laughs> hodophobia, hodo is the Greek word for travel, and fear. In Greek is phobia. So there you go. There we go. Well, here's George. He's got his head. He's got his hat back on. So this is normally where the hat lives, on my uh, my bust of myself from uh, season two. So yeah, there we go. So I've got George's bust right there. That's where the hat normally lives. Um, but yeah, Very so as I say, so the the boiler was packed in, so I didn't get to do that <laughs> for a while. Um, and then what else did I do? Yeah, and then yeah. Oh, actually, I started playing cricket again. So a few of my old school pals and I went down to the Nets at Edgebaston, which is a uh, test ground in Birmingham. And yeah, we had an hour there. It was absolutely fantastic to be able to do that again. So that was really, really cool. So it was fantastic to do that. Very good. You've just missed one of my did you knows, but I'll give you another did you know. Yeah, go on. You know the Great Barrier Reef? I do know it. Did you know it's the only living thing that is visible from space? It's the largest living organism on the planet. There you go. Oh, God, no, not the drum. The drum is back. And on that note, guys, thank you for joining us today. Enough of this messing around. We're going to dive straight in with Evie. Hope you enjoy. Enjoy. So, Evie, thank you so much for joining us on our season three podcast, the uh, normal, not normal podcast, as we're calling it this season. So, do you want to know roughly what we're getting at with the normal, not normal? Yeah, thing? please tell me. Right. So how we're basically forming it is like my normal, James's normal and your normal are completely different things. So we're trying to dispel this whole terminology, I suppose, of, oh, yeah, it's a normal life. I don't mm-hmm. think there's any such thing as a normal life. Um, so I thought we'd just involve you in terms of what is your normality, as it were. So, you know, like yeah. I mean, obviously, like we've got a common normality in terms of being in Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like, but I suppose going before that, like, so what was your normal? I'm going to stop doing normal before I do all that. Um, <laughs> so what was your normal pre getting into Harry Potter? Like what, was, Potter. what was life, oh. life like growing up? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's an interesting question. And I think it's such an interesting concept because people always say, I, I hear so many actors saying like, they refer to other people. Oh no, they just have a normal job. As if our our job is like, yeah. It's just, we're not normal. I don't know. But I think, and I love that that you're talking about this because I think you just find the more you meet actors, the more you're like, oh, they're just normal people. And that's what I really found out when I got in the Harry Potter films. <laughs> um, but yeah, so before the Potter films, my normal, I mean, I lived in the countryside, deep, deep countryside, ridiculous place called Herman Fekin. Like we didn't, our parents just kept buying us pets because we didn't have any other kids to play with and there was no bus to get into town. So, so yeah, where, we had... Where in, where in Ireland is that? If I'm looking at a map of Ireland, whereabouts is it? 
It's on the east coast, so about an hour north of Dublin, but it's still the okay. Republic of Ireland. So, yep. um, yeah, it's very upsetting when people call me British because I'm not. <laughs> I feel like that's we're something gonna, we should tell you. We're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into all that going on. Yeah. No, we're Evie, not going we to also, get into it. We also, but, run but by it pub, we also run pub rules here where there's no religion and no politics talked. Oh, great. Phew. Okay. <laughs> I'm so here for that. Um, but you are right. The Republic of Ireland is no separate country. Yes, it's a separate country and there was a big deal about that. So don't call Irish people British. Yeah, I feel like yes. a lot of Americans don't understand that. And we often no, just it's a bit like, I spe- But it's funny though, because a lot of other people don't like being called British as well, like the Welsh. Well, some do. But, but some they people are, are British, aren't they? No, I know, I, know, but I know, but some people really like to be spoken as they, oh. their identified country, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, as a collective person. I mean, we can't even say we're European anymore. That's really Yeah. Annoying. Okay, pub yeah. rules, pub rules. Pub rules, pub rules. Anyway, anyway, back to where you grew up. I um, grew up, yeah. So, so there, I had three siblings and the norm was just, oh, my parents are teachers. And by now, most of my family are teachers, my siblings. But it's funny, like growing up, my, my parents would always say, don't be a teacher because they just, they, it was so much work. I think teachers, I think teachers are amazing and they really do, they bring home their work. They can't not, like my mom is always thinking about her students. She teaches children um, who have learning difficulties and every case is so different, so individual. And so she brings on a lot. It's almost like being a therapist. Um, so anyway, I grew up around that and very bookish family, very, very into reading and um yeah that's kind of it we just had loads of cats um i went to drama classes every wednesday school that was that was my normal so so being like in the in the countryside in mm. ireland and that part of uh, in that part of the country did you get into like like what was your outlet as you say you went to like drama classes and stuff like that so were you outgoing were you like the life and soul or how is it how, how, how does it work in that, no. in that sort of environment no, no, no. I was so shy and um, very introverted. In a family of introverts, I think I was the most introverted. I would just like to be in my room, um, beading. I did a lot of art. So, you know, the things I made for the film, that was my big hobby, uh, like the jewellery things. Um, that, I was just so happy doing that. Um, I had friends, but there was like only, there were 17 people in our class. So you had a limited array of friends to pick mm. from um but yeah mostly just like art anything creative that got into drama because i found it really helped me overcome my shyness because i think people think with shy people they think oh you just don't want to talk or be involved but it's not that you really you, you want to connect and you i was really sensitive so i really wanted to connect with people and i found that just being given a script it was like oh great i don't have to think of what to say i could just um try on someone else so yeah, that was really freeing. And that yeah, that was my thing. But I mean, siblings as well, as you know, they keep you busy. There were so many of us. I mean, only oh, there's four of us, but at that age, everyone's loud. So you're having mm. to share your parents. Oh, me and my sister also used to go to piano lessons, um, various things, ballet classes. Yeah, very lucky. I did all the classes. Oh, brilliant. And Harry Potter, of course. What drew you to Harry Potter and uh, why is it? Why is it that really captivates you? Was it the characters? Was it, this, was it the scenarios? Tell us. I mean, that is the million dollar question. I, I just, oh yeah, I got utterly obsessed. So I read them first when I was eight. My mum came home with a book from the library, and she was like, "Oh, your aunt said this would be a good read. She said it's really good." And I was in a phase where I was reading Baby Series Club books, and I was like, "I don't want to read about a boy in glasses." I was really in a girly phase, and then anyway, but she was reading it to my brother. Um, one night before bed and I just was like this is so good and so I stole the book and just I just fell into this world and I I mean it was I think it's just the characters are so amazing and I really felt like oh these are my people these are my friends and um just I felt so much comfort from it so much inspiration um yeah and I've always loved fantasy for that that it's it's a different world and you can yeah it's really imaginative but what's so beautiful about harry potter is that it's a different world but the characters are so normal and like harry's going through all the same things and just that that, i think that thing that he feels that is such a universal feeling that he's just always like why me i'm i'm not really anyone significant i'm not talented i don't have anything special and yet i've been put into this role and that's kind of something he grapples with throughout the whole series and i really i think he's such an underrated character i think harry's really the main interesting role. 
You can't say he's yeah. the most underrated character. No, he is because people, whenever you say, oh, who's your favorite character? People say the more obscure ones like us, like our characters, but they never say Harry. And I just yeah, think but he gets great. everything though, doesn't he? He does everything. Yeah, but he doesn't get much love for it. I don't know. I what mean, do you mean? Like, I mean, granted, he had a warlord trying to kill him uh, for everyone. Exactly. Actually, he had so much pressure on him. <laughs> And he never had a choice. He didn't have his parents. I, I yep. always feel like, you know that scene in book five in Order of the Finks where he gets mad and smashes up Dumbledore's office? I love that scene. I'm like, finally, Harry, you're right. Damn straight. And I don't think that they made that scene angry enough in the films. That's one of my it, gripes. <laughs> do you think it may be because, though, he ended up with his best friend's sister? And to yeah, my knowledge, I mean, did he ask I mean, permission to go on a date? <laughs> This is getting a bit too personal. I can tell. I've touched a nerve here. Break we like it when people face, say our characters it? are the best characters, Evie. We're trying to yeah, fight yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You, of course. You're wonderful. But, but I'm in, just... terms, in, in terms of though, like reading like, and getting into the characters and everything, stuff like that, how old were you when you first got into it? Yeah, so I was eight when I first started reading them. And it just took over my whole identity. I loved it so much. Didn't want to hang out with my friends. I was like, these are my favorite people. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I was really proud of like being a nerd about it. Like, I just wanted everyone to know me for being the biggest Harry Potter fan. And then mm. I started going online, started going on MuggleNet and discovered people who are just as obsessed as me. And I got really angry. I was like, no, I'm the best Harry Potter fan. But all these people were writing fanfic and doing all these quizzes and everything. So, yeah. Was... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've got to be honest. When we were filming, um, certainly the, the, first, the first movie as well, because obviously we were still very young I mean, and very new to the game as well. So we didn't realize how, how the whole filming industry works and obviously we knew that they were going to be doing the change with secrets so i've got to be honest uh, once or twice we did have a look on a few of the forums just to see what people were you know what what ideas or rumors were, in, were going about Cause sometimes you know be it like new cast or or mm -hmm. anything like that um and they actually uh sometimes they'll be right so they suggest like you know oh, we hear that julie walters is going to be mrs weasley oh wow, wow. and then as it turned out, they were they were correct on that. So, <gasps> so wait, so, all that was such a big secret for a long time, and you knew, and it hadn't been announced. No, we saw we saw we well we no we saw rumours of it when we were filming, um, right. and then because Julie didn't join the cast until oh okay after we after we'd started, you see, so we weren't too sure who was going to be our mum, as it were. So when mm. we saw the rumours, we were like, oh brilliant, that's that's great. Um, but then other stuff, not so, it wasn't. I wouldn't say as accurate. So I remember one time. Uh, we were looking up and it was about the Chamber of Secrets and they were talking about the music, what, what would be used for it. And one of the top, one of the top ones was that Limp Biscuit were going to be doing the, the title theme tune. Oh, my God. And I was like, well, how's that going to work? You know, I, I don't know what, what, what music they could use for it, apart from maybe the start of um, what's that song, My Generation, you know, for the Quidditch scene where they're like, if only we can fly. And then you probably couldn't use any other lyric what comes in that song. Mm. Um, so sometimes it was... It made a lot of sense. Other times it made no sense at all, you know. But Wow. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. That was such fun times as a fan, that the rumours and like when cast photos, yeah, from my perspective, being the one online looking up these things, when they would do the first reveal of the character or Goblet of Fire when you all had the long edgy haircuts, it was just like, oh, wow, taking things in a new direction. And that was so <laughs> exciting as a fan to see those announcements and to be reading all the rumours. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first time I remember the first time I remember feeling very privileged to be on the um on the know as it were when the first film was being made. I remember Oliver myself and Luke Youngblood <clears throat> went to Chris Columbus's office just to say hi. And he literally said, "Oh guys, check out this poster." And it was the owl poster, you know, the first one that they revealed, which mm -hmm. didn't have anything on it apart from the owl holding the envelope. Yeah. And Aww. I can remember that's when we were like well, wow, that's cool. They haven't even shown anything else that we all know what's being filmed at the moment. I think we were filming the, um, well, a load of Great Hall scenes that week. So I remember we were feeling very, that's cool. We know what's going on before other people. Oh, my God. So is that what, so when you say you're on forums beforehand, were you just reading or were you contributing to this, this would be, this person would be great at this part or if they filmed it in this certain way? A um, bit of both, mostly reading. Um, I actually did get into fan fiction for a little bit um, and who was I writing about? I was probably writing about Luna. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I was definitely, I was definitely a big part of the community. 
And that was why it was so weird when I got the part, because I was like, I know all the secrets. I couldn't, I felt like a bit of a traitor to my community that I couldn't tell them what was <laughs> going out. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I was, I was everything I was, I was really involved in. And, and I had, had all these opinions on like who they would cast and, um, yeah, just how they would do things. I was definitely the annoying fan being like, so why did you cut this scene out? You know, and it's like, oh, you have to explain that so many times. You can't do the whole book. But um, yeah, you take very, everything very personally as, as a fan, all those decisions. And you kind of want to make the movie yourself. But that would be mm. a disaster. I mean, to, <laughs> I, mean, what, I mean, just the idea of just designing your own earrings mm. and stuff like that. Like that, I, I would, as a, I'd never thought that I could do anything what would be directly involved in the in the in the filming process like, like like you did so that's definitely something that i've not i didn't even foresee oh maybe you know maybe we could do something for the sliding snack boxes for example mm. that never even entered my mind in a million years so to, so it obviously shows like your creative output and also i suppose the bulls to go and say can i did you oh well, is that first of all did you did you ask them can I do that? Um, no. So I came to my first audition wearing those because I'd actually been Luna for the previous Halloween. So I had all my gear ready to uh, go. Cool. So I came wearing these and then I came to my screen test and another pair of earrings because they really liked them. Um, you know, I just, and I think, so it was their idea. I had my ideas, but they were like, they just liked that it looked really handmade and it wasn't, you know, it was a bit smudgy and, just obviously made yeah by 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 a person by luna um and they brought that more and more into her character they let me design the lion hat as well um i think that was just but that was also a lot to do like them and david yates and that was yeah. what i loved about david yates he's so involved you in the character he was never going to just come over and tell you what to do tell you how to feel he was all about bringing the bits of the character out for you and they even actually asked me to design this is one of my biggest regrets about the movie they asked me if i wanted to design the paintings on the inside of the love good house which weren't really seen in the movie but they are a set and they were stunning they they literally gave me these like um the architecture the paper the giant papers so to, with all the dimensions and measurements and they were like have at it paint the room if you want and I was doing my um a level equivalent I was doing my leaving cert and I think I just saw this and I was like oh no this is way too serious I can't do it so I said no and I was oh, like my no. leaving cert is more important but it so wasn't it I know wasn't. I know stay in school kids but something's really really hard yeah, to design <laughs> once in a lifetime opportunity but yeah I didn't do that but they were very it was all them they were always encouraging me to do more yeah so you just briefed on you just mentioned that can you talk us through the audition process mm. Yeah, so, um, right, so it was an open audition. So, and I I was going on MuggleNet every day. And I actually had written to them, can I be Luna? Um, and they'd sent me a letter back being like, nice to hear from you, thanks so much. I have this letter, I keep it, because I just like, it's such a special little artifact. And they did say, oh, you know, nationality comes into it and where you live. So they were kind of like, sorry, you're Irish, you know? And there was nothing in the books to say that Luna was Irish. There still isn't. Um, I don't. I don't think J.K. Rowling had written her that way. So anyway, I got this letter then being like, polite, you know, we'll call you. Um, and then and then I was, but I was seeing, I knew that they were casting her and I was seeing online that they were talking. There was an interview David Heyman gave where he was like, we have narrowed it down to five people. But then they did an open audition, I think as a last, like, oh, let's just see what what's out there. And um, so I read about it on MuggleNet. I just begged my dad to bring me and he was like, yeah, why not? Let the hell with it. Um, and my mom was very against me going because she was like, oh, if she goes and doesn't get this, like she will never recover. <laughs> and I think it would have been it would have been very hard to watch the movies and watch someone else play that part if I'd got close. Mm. Um, mm. So but anyway, yeah, went went on. It was in London in the Methodist Hall in London. And funny story, my dad actually went back there a few years ago. Oh, it was mortifying. He went back. He was like, oh, let's go back down memory lane. And we went into the Methodist Hall and he literally went to some sort of priest. Do you know who this is? And I was like, dad, <laughs> this guy doesn't give a damn. It's not like he was, I'm, I've got my poster up in the Methodist Hall. They just rented it out for a weekend and probably didn't know what it was even for. But yeah, he does that. So it was in <laughs> Methodist Hall and it was just thousands of people it was there was a low went there at 8 a.m on a saturday morning and had to queue for like three or four hours 
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it was very intense, crazy. And they, but they had restrictions. You had to be between the age of 13 and 16. And I was 14. Um, but the girl in front of me who queued for four hours as well, she was 12. She was like six months off. And so when we got to the front door, they were like, sorry, they checked her passport and she was just gone. Oh. So it was very a lot to do with look. And it was very just cutthroat at that time. And then the next stage of the audition was literally got a bunch of the girls to line up. We all had to step forward, say our name and where we came from. Fiona Weir was on stage with her casting person and they just like whispered and then they would pick out two or three people and I got picked. And that was the moment where I was like, that's so lucky. Like they're just deciding based on your height, how you sound, things you can't control. Yeah. So it was harsh. Um, And then the next room I got into was they actually gave the scene where Harry and Lynn are talking about the Pestrels and they were like, have a few minutes to look over it and um yeah had that had had a quick reading with um i think it was alice or lucy lucy and then um she was like let's get fiona in here and fiona was the person i'd been bombarding with letters like i knew all the crew's (laughs) names so i was like oh my god it's getting serious fiona weir and she was really nice and she asked me about my earrings and stuff and they seemed interested, but I'd heard that thing that, and she was like, okay, well, we'll get in touch. I'd heard that actor thing as we're, we'll call you. Yeah. Don't call us. Thought, we'll call you type thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then I finally got out and my dad was really worried because he was like, all the girls came in and came out, but you didn't, I didn't, I was actually in there for quite a long time. Um, so we knew that that was a good sign and yeah, that was it. That was my first audition. No, brilliant. And in terms of like the the whole thing about in terms of like when you when you left the audition process or mm-hmm. when you when you went back to Ireland, should I say, um, from then. First, yeah. of all, had had you been to London before? Or was yeah. that like the first? Yeah, once. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. And then after that, so when you was it just a case of okay, yeah, we'll be in touch because I remember when we left our it was probably our third or fourth audition, James, and I remember the casting assistant just said she was an American girl and she said, okay, have a nice life. Now, in America, apparently, that's it. Or in California, where, where, wherever this girl was from was very... I have a case. feeling it was from her house, that's what they said. Yeah, so I I've think never... so, because I've spoken to people since, and they've said, no, no, that's 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 rubbish. <laughs> that's um, weird, yeah. But it's a case of, like, she was just saying, right, okay, well, you know, take care, we'll see. We'll speak to you, you know, mm. see you again or whatever. Um, but we took that as have a nice life. Ah, well, that's that finished with. Yeah. Back to school or Aww. whatever. Um, and then that was it. So we kind of went from going from, oh, we're we're here, no, we're not. And then luckily, what, a day later, we got a phone call back. So how long was it in between the two t- before you got a, a call or whatever saying It was so see quick. Again? The process for me was so quick. I think because you guys were due to start filming in three weeks and the open audition was just a last, let's see what's out there. I think they had people they were thinking about, but they just weren't sure. Um, and so it was really quick. So I went for the audition on the Saturday, got a call on the Monday. They said, come in for a screen test on the Friday. And then I found out, the next the Monday after that so it was less than two weeks and what I was, was lucky and what was that like when you did you get I assume you got a phone call or your mum or dad got a phone call yeah I got a phone call um first from Fiona and then David Yates called me and I knew his name of course because I've been stalking him and then he was <laughs> like yeah Dan's gonna be in the audition and like my obsession with Dan was just on on another level <laughs> I had his autograph I did I'd written to him I had all his form letters when you write, you know, dear yeah. fan, thank you so much. Um, so that was really, and they also said something really weird to me on that phone call that I was like, okay, this is serious. That Fiona goes to me, um, just don't shave your eyebrows. And I was like, what? And I think <laughs> uh, my eyebrows were a bit wonky or something. <laughs> I don't know. I tried some beauty trick where I'd like <laughs> snipped off bits. And when she said that, I was like, oh, they're really looking at me. They really mm. are quite interested. Um, so yeah, that was, but that was all very, and it was also like, I went to bed, posters all the way around my room. I went to bed, like gazing at Dan Emma Rupert. <laughs> so it was just so bizarre. So, I found out how to talk at, to them. Were you then looking at those photos saying, we're going to be friends? <laughs> then... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I absolutely was. I was convinced, but like, and I wasn't wrong. No. Well, I was, I mean, no. I think like, Dan is so lovely, but we never got close because I think he was a bit like, I'm going to keep you here. <laughs> <laughs> and he was dead right to do that. Um, but I think, yeah, like reading the books, I was like, these are my people. And then I finally got there. But the hard thing was that when I finally got there, I didn't know how to talk to them. Because all I knew, like my whole mm. life 
I just was obsessed. And like, I'd ask Dan a question. I knew his cat's names. I knew his parents' names. So I'd just keep meeting people and I'd be like, I know who you are. And I didn't know how to tone it down. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it, I, I didn't really know how to socialize with you all. Because, was, I mean, would... yeah. So where was the where was the the screen test? So the screen test is obviously when you go in, on a set and film it. Was it actually on one of the Potter? I suppose in Dumbledore's of office. Yeah. Oh wow! Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, it's in oh, the circular, wicked. beautiful office, and I did a little scene with Dan, and then they go, oh, and they dressed me up in costume, of course, and everything, and then um, and then David got me to improv, sent Dan away, and he said, just um, be Luna in the mm. office. What would she do? So I was just like. I was playing like a little skipping game and it, yeah, he was just really, he was really nice to facilitate just creativity. But you saying that thing about have a nice life. When I left the screen test, um, he hand me a signed book, Order of the Phoenix, which I was a bit like, as if I don't already have this, you know, why are you giving me this? And he, he signed it. Nice to meet you, David Yates. And I was like, that's it. That's goodbye. He's saying, Nice. Why would he say nice to meet me if he wants to cast me? Yeah. And that crushed me. I, I so, and we were in this, we were in the Grove Hotel, this fancy hotel, and I just cried and cried all evening. I didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah, it was, it was, it was horrible waiting for that phone call. Yeah, and it, so it would have ruined Harry Potter for me. Well, I mean, how long was it in between? Yeah, how long would it be from again from the? Are we talking about hours or a day or so from the final? Screen test so to get in the screen call. test on the Friday, and then I got the call telling me I got it on the Monday, so I didn't have to wait long. Right, okay. Just oh, a yeah. week. Okay. So, but when you yeah. said, but when you say Evie that you you weren't sure how to approach all the uh, the cast who are yeah. already in it, I guess it's exactly like if you're starting a new school. Everybody's yeah. always got, but this is a school which you've seen. You've everybody you've seen. So. You probably know more about everybody than everybody knows about each other already. Exactly. I was stalking everyone. So it was just like, suddenly I have to try and fit in and be professional. And so when people would be like, how are you? What do you like? I'd be like, you, you know? <laughs> so it was just, it was just, um, yeah. And I felt, it, I felt so inferior. It wasn't just that I was really obsessed with you all. I just felt like, oh, I fought so hard to get here. I've, I've willed myself here. I've manifested this, but now I just don't feel like I deserve it. I've, I've never had any acting training and just, I mean, even the fact that you're all English, I, I just felt, oh, they have this swag about them or something. <laughs> um, they, the English accent sounds more confident and authoritative. And I just, I didn't, I was really fine with the acting though. I will say that like, it was just playing. It was just switching on into Luna. It was one that, when, it was when the scenes were cut. I was just like, I don't know how to be a, an actor. I don't know what, like, you know, to be a celebrity when you just don't feel very worthy of that attention. It was very, very confronting. Yeah, so, I mean, there was a thing where, um, I mean, going back to a bit earlier, like we saw, a, we saw a quote from David Heyman saying about, you know, the other girls or the others could play Luna, uh, but Evie is Luna. So in terms of like actually getting on, getting on set, getting on set, as you say, and, and being the character and just playing as it were, and then when it yells cut, did you feel like you had to almost step back from yourself in terms of like, I, I can't impose myself too much because it is too full on, or was it the shyness from when you were a bit younger? Um, almost coming as a default, without sounding too full on. Hmm. Yeah, it was just, I mean, and it actually really helped for playing Luna, like that I did weird people out quite a lot. <laughs> you know, it was, she is spacey. Um, I I actually, I don't, I don't agree with David Heyman. I think I was quite different to Luna. And I think that's why I loved her so much because I, I think I was quite negative and I would be very hard on myself. And I found she was so self-accepting and that was really radical to me. And I wanted to be more of that. Um, right. So I think, yeah, it was kind of good to have that a little bit of separation from the cast for that reason. Um, but it was lonely. Um, and I think and I think it was also that, yeah, I wasn't popular at all. And not I suppose not many of us were like we weren't we weren't stage school kids, anyone. But um, I was just so used to like at lunch times, I would read a book sometimes or and not, not because nobody would talk to me, but that's just who I was really. Um, so to suddenly yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt everyone was so cool and so confident. And I just, 
it, it was I got to sit with all the cool kids and I didn't I hadn't earned it you know mm. yeah which is funny to hear because like when we were filming it I'd say if anything we were probably the furthest from that in terms of being like the cool collector kids because we were all separated from our normality of regular schooling or whatever like that mm. whereas to say on the on the fifth movie I mean would that have been James would we have been making crossbows and stuff by then or would we throw the balling it or something like that yeah we were um, basically releasing hanging out. we were hanging out with in Rupert's dressing room at the end of the corridor because he he had the biggest dressing room out of the three of us and I remember they bought him a dartboard because we kept disappearing all over the studio do you remember this and then they bought him a dartboard once to keep us basically in there just playing darts. But that got a bit boring, so we decided to make a crossbow. And we're playing darts with a crossbow. Oh to, which, <laughs> to which I remember one day um, someone quite high up walked into the, the room. High up? She looked, wrote the books. Yes. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Just looked what was going on and turned around and walked back out. Oh, my God, <laughs> that's so great. What a cool story. Wow. Um, yeah, I so actually we... loved it, though. That's so your characters. I don't know. I, I love I when know. there are parallels like that. I, mean, <laughs> I, even, I even love that you're hosting a podcast because, like, in the books, they do Potter yeah. Watch. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. cool, these exactly, parallels. Yeah. So yeah. we were um, – it was kind of just – I suppose it was just a natural progression. But I think that's where, like, yeah, maybe the characters did come into a bit of a mind of their – almost seep in. You could call it – call it method, call it what you want to. But it was more a case of we were trying to relieve the boredom and what's the easiest way to relieve the boredom. <laughs> when no one will say, please don't do that. Um, and you weren't in school, you guys. <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. So basic... but, but yeah, we'd be acting the most immature of everybody. Like, we'd do, like, stupid... Like, looking back, some of the stuff we did was absolutely stupid. <laughs> Actually, um, no, tell a lie. I got I got a, um, a qualification in English literature on that film. <gasps> did you? Whoa. I did. Yeah. Mm. Go you. Yeah, well, you actually look kind the... of like an English professor in your He does, that's, that's what I'm going yeah. for. Oliver, Oliver looks for some... I don't know what he looks like today, but... <laughs> you look yeah, like you what... could be in Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. That's, that's it, I've just, stepped out. I've, just stepped, I've just stepped in from the uh, the shop floor at the moment. Yeah. Uh, everything's yeah, going online tell. right now, so I've got to watch the out, the outgoing stuff, yeah. All the hours are rocking so when... to deliver. <laughs> so, Ubi, when you've... So you got the call on the Monday. Mm. Did you tell your friends straight away, or did you wait until you got back, or...? Yeah, I wasn't allowed. Um, so I, the, mem- the place I was standing, it was after school and I was checking my phone all day. I was like, I, I literally thought, if I miss this call, they'll think I don't want the part and they'll give it to someone else. So I was yeah. so anxious. But the, she called me about half four. Fiona told me, my mum and sister were in the car and I just went, and they were like, what? And so then F- um, Vanessa, you know, the PR uh, um, yep. publicist, yep. she she said, so we have to curate this announcement. Um, we have to wait 10 days. Um, so I couldn't tell anyone. So I told my whole family and we all had cake that evening. But I also did my homework that evening because I was like, if I don't do my homework, I was uh, it, it would yeah. be weird. My, yeah. my teachers would not would have been like, are you sick? So um, I did my French homework. Um and yeah, didn't tell. I think I started. I also had a lot of pen pals. I was that weird kid. I I I joined a pen pal club. So I remember I wrote to my pen pals before the announcement because I was like, by the time they get it, it'll be out. So um, yeah, I did things like that. Oh, but I didn't really? tell my friends till like the day before. A few friends. Yeah. yeah. Did you? We did you rock up to school the next day with sunglasses on? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I rocked up with a bodyguard. Did you have that? <laughs> He was so annoying. He was waiting outside my classrooms and tailing me everywhere. Did you have that? No, I probably needed yeah. it sometimes. You are kid- you're kidding, that. though. I'm really? not kidding. I they they sent me a bodyguard. Really? Yes, because there was so much media coming to the school, and literally he would meet me out, out of classes and escort me around. It was so. I mean, it was kind of cool. It was kind That'd of cool. Was he like it? Form, was cool. he former special service? Like, yeah. Something Secret like that. Service. But bald yeah. guy, you know. He'd like walk around. He'd walk guy. around like speaking into his uh, his sleep. Um, yeah, Evie is just leaving the lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> on our way to French yeah yeah um, and they even had they also had two cars so they didn't want my photo me getting photographed and that getting out um, so we had a decoy car we had a car that would pick my sisters up and they went and so the photographers would follow them and then me and the other car it was so funny <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah oh I'm sad you didn't ever have a bodyguard that was an I'm, experience no I mean we, well, we we had bodyguards when we went on the the promo tours yeah the tours yeah but never at school or anything like that that's uh, 
That's crazy. I wish we did. God, you could have had so much fun. Yeah, Yeah, I know. I'd probably just look at him and go, remember, you see see that kid over there? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so that was a weird day. Like, they announced it in school over the intercom. And also, like, yeah, when I first walked in, there was, like, everyone was lined up at the windows and they were so excited. Um, yeah, it was just, I mean, nothing like that ever happens in Ireland. So it was, we were excited. That's cool. Yeah. Especially that the school was so proud of it as well to announce it to everybody and, and stuff like that. That's really cool. To, I mean, we got nothing like that. Um, Did you not? To no. be fair, we didn't try. We didn't try to. I couldn't care less. Um, but it's... It's cool though for that. Though, for well, was that because the films weren't big then? So, like, they didn't even know what it would be? No, I'd, I'd say our school's no. mentality, uh, uh, definitely the, I'd say the students were, you Great. could have come and created a, <laughs> a um, cure for world hunger and everybody would be like, oh, well done. Wow. <laughs> like That's so, sad. Not that, that, not that it's a bad thing. Maybe it is, uh, but equally, we, I think that's maybe why we don't go for big attention a lot of times. Demand, he says, body. looking at Oliver dressed like that. <laughs> hey, hey, I saw you last week, James. Yeah. So, but I mean, was there, was there anything that you remember from, say, that firm, first time of filming? Was there a time when you got you got into it and we were, say, I don't know if there's, there's an example, when, when we were filming together, I don't know what scenes they would be, probably Great Hall scenes or something like that. Mm-hmm. When you saw all the cast in one place for one time, or would that have been the read-through? Read through, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how was that? How was that to take in? Was that a case of just like this is really cool? One, I'm getting the script before anyone's seen it. Yeah. Um, and then you can actually hear how people do it and see how people interact and stuff like that. It was terrifying, um, the, but read throughs always are. That's what I found as an actor. They're always horrible. I hate them because you're meeting all these new people that you're quite impressed by, and you're like it's not a performance but you want to try and make people laugh and stuff so um yeah i don't like read throughs but yeah i was just i mean i was it was two things it was like being in complete awe also being the fan being like they left this out <laughs> what, what was it like telling your friends and telling um like the people online who you've made friends with and everything <laughs> like that that that's what you were going into to do it was there obviously everyone getting really involved and really into it and then seeing like you know people looking like being fans of you then? Mm. Well, it was weird because there were a bunch of people who I told before I'd gone for any audition that I was going to play the part. I was like, I'm going to be, I really was quite, I was just like, if I can just get there and they can see me, I know Luna. I was like, I've got the best interpretation of her. So it was weird. There was a girl on my bus who I'd be like, I'm definitely going to be in a Harry Potter film. And she'd just be like, yeah, okay. So that was satisfying to be like, no. You know, here is the news round announcement. Um, but yeah, so it was telling my friends. I mean, they were all so excited and they were all like, whoa, this is your obsession. And they were all like, what are you going to say to Daniel Radcliffe? And everyone was like, are you going to take down all your posters? <laughs> like my room was so dark. I, I, I actually had a pink pink paint, like it was pink walls, but it, it was black because of all the posters. There was just not an inch. I was actually at the point when I got the part, I was like, I think I'm gonna have to start putting things on the ceiling now. It was just so, so I didn't take them down for that film because I was really proud of my collection. But by the sixth film, I took them down. I was like, this is too much. This is too weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I suppose at least, at least the cool thing is though, that when the fifth one came out, you were on the poster. Yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. put me on one of my walls. Yeah, I mean, as who well. does? I mean, yeah. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a cool thing to do. Of course. Yeah. Do you have anything yeah. in your house right now of Potter? Yes, I. Um, oh, not on my wall. Or no. In general. I've got, I've got my Spectre specs. Um. I oh, I've got a picture of Luna right over there actually. I've got. I do have George's missing ear somewhere. Oh wow! Yeah, it's um, oh gross. He's, he's, yeah, it's on the wall uh, upstairs. <laughs> Just pinned well, there. <laughs> well, no, it's in a it's in a, it's in a frame. But they uh, because oh. they well they 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 would make a new one every day. So wow, it went from I'm everything really from literally surprised. taking it off and just throwing it against the wall, or just on the. I think it was one of the last ones I had. I just put in a bit of tissue paper and took it home. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, you didn't tell them that you were taking oh, it. No, no, I told them I was taking it because it normally oh. just went in the bin anyway. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because yeah, so they were so 
I asked for, they, they made molds of my feet for one scene, even though we didn't end up using them. And I asked for them and they wouldn't let me have them. And they are on exhibition. Like everything, they're like, no, we're going gonna, we're gonna to put it out there. And I think they always money. knew they were going to do that, didn't they? I mean, I do, I do have a bust of my head though still. Oh, cool. Yeah, wow. I've got it in here actually. Why did you have your head cast? For the ear. For the whole ear? Yep, so for this little bit of the ear, they, they basically filled out, did a, a copy of my whole head. Oh my and then from that, they'd build it up so they knew exactly what to work with. But the one at the, How much at the of studio your, your whole ear is gone, right? In yeah, the whole lot, yeah. yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So it was a little hole. I actually found some photos wow. the other day of the original um, design for when George gets it knocked off. How bloody and gory it was. And there was like Whoa. singed hair. There was, it was like blood everywhere. But they were told, I think it was going to turn the film to an, a 15 rating if it. Oh, really? If they that, at least, yeah. So they, they, they had to dumb it down a bit in the actual scene. I think they should make a Netflix series of the books and just do every chapter and we'll work forever and we'll get lots of Botox so nobody will age. <laughs> I tell you what. Speak for yourself. Yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. You could be a teacher with that one, James. You'd be all right. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I ask, did you, like, did you like your characters? Were they your favourite characters? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Mainly because, t- I think two reasons. One, because they were very... I suppose sarcastic and also very much the joking force of it, which is obviously an attractive trait. And also being an identical twin, you gravitate to people who are like you. And that, yeah. was, that was very much how I how I saw the characters. So when it became to, got to the point to where we had the chance to audition for them, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal to be able to do that, if you know what I mean. It was very much a case of, oh, cool, yeah, we'll just, uh, all right, I know, I know what these guys can do. And we were kind of it as well. And how yeah, but you say you that, but I was, I, I was going to say I was a lot like you said, Evie, that I was very shy. And so playing a character which was quite outgoing was wow. something new. And wow. I, would, I would say I was very shy for at least one and a half films. Really? Huh. And I was always worried that people think I was quite um, arrogant or whatever, but I wasn't. I was, exactly mm. like you were saying, I wasn't. I was just, I didn't want to put my foot in it. If the tension ever came my way, I knew I'd drop the ball and say something really silly. And did it help (laughs) you playing Fred? Yes, definitely. It brought you out well. Definitely. I have a question. How did you guys decide who would play who? Did you have a preference from reading the books? Um, No, so how it actually worked was they, they, uh, just before the final, the first read-through, and we're talking five minutes before we're supposed to start, we still had no idea who was Fred and who was George. So we asked Janet Hutchinson, who is the main casting director, you know, who's, who's Fred and who's George? And she said, are you you're kidding? That's no. a great one. A good, good one, good one. Really don't know. So she, we saw her, well, it was in, and those are the days before we used to do the read-through in the Great Hall. It was done in the, as you go into the old Leeson Studios, there was like that office space at the top, at the top end where you could rent out type thing. And it was in, a, it was in there. And it was a big square table. So, you saw Janet walk around to the other side, pretty much, and there was uh, J.K. Rowling, David. Uh, who was there? David Heyman. David Heyman, and Chris Columbus. Chris Columbus. And you see Janet just suddenly dip in and start talking. They 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 look to each other to have a little discussion, and then we're talking like a twenty second discussion, if that. And then Janet walks back around and says, "Right, okay, uh, James, you're Fred, Oliver, you're George." Now we always like to think they're just. Oh, you didn't get the memo about the huge meeting we had in Burbank with like fifty people on the call. <laughs> Um, but in hindsight, it was probably either Chris, David, or uh, J.K. Rowling just saying, I don't know, um, James is Fred. So that, 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 that could right. be how it is. We'll never know. Some things, I think, will never be known. Because I, I, there's no way she didn't have a clear idea of how distinct the characters are. Because it's hard in the books because they always talk together and like finish each other's sentences, but Joe would have known what's, you know, what, where, they, where they diverge a lot, where they differ. Yeah, I think I imagine it was her. I like um, to think so. I like yeah. to think so. Yeah. Um, and we sorry for hijacking the interview, but Hello, how, how did you feel when when Fred died? I've had better days. <laughs> so it was one of those, isn't it? That, oh, that sounded really cool. Um, no, I. How did I feel? I came, but I was more confused. I was, I was shocked by reading what had happened. Were you shocked? Yeah, because his death yeah. is so annoying. It's like the room explodes, and then he's dead and, and you're he's like, gone no 
You're, you're like, well, the, he's not dead. Thing, it's not. The thing was, not, I was, yeah. I was reading it and I was shocked at what had happened. I was shocked at how shocked I was because until that point, I hadn't realized how attached I'd got to the character. <gasps> wow. And I think the the last book came out when we we just finished filming the fifth one. Yeah. Yeah. Fifth yeah, that's one, right. Yeah. So, you know, I had no idea um, that is how I was I was leaning towards the character. So that was that was a bit a bit of a funny thing. But then I thought, at least it's the last one. If it was, <laughs> at least I've been out. There's, there's still That's two so more films true. I can film to do it. And you know, I actually some like I forget that Fred died because we never had a book without him. We never really had to experience his absence or or grieve. So it's it's it, I mean it's so tragic. Like imagine it'd been awful if there was another film and you were I mean, just I was, sat at home. I was, I was well, as long as he comes back as a ghost. Okay, yeah, which he was. I was always oh. guessing. Let's, let's go for that. I was always guessing it didn't make it into the the final film. Um, the actual scene because I remember yeah. we actually went and met with the directors didn't we? with with David and said you know you why why, why is this not in there um, and just stuff like that so what did they just, say yeah they, I think it was a, I think there's a few things I won't go into it but it was all very I mean it wasn't like there was tantrums or anything like that it was very well explained but then they then went and added the scene when Fred and George are looking out over the battle mm. yeah and. Which was literally right, uh, the last, it was one of the last scenes they filmed moments. on the whole film because they'd shown it, I think they'd already done the tester and the thing was, we need to tee up Fred and George like for what's going to happen type thing. Because I think obviously a lot of people knew what happened and it was where where was that. So it's kind of like a, I suppose a family friendlier version of, of it. I think so, but wasn't it wasn't it also that with the way that ratings are, you can, there can only be so many deaths before it gets put into... Really, a higher grading or something like that. I'll actually physically show something happen. So, because um, it's quite a, a gruesome one when you think about it, the last one. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that was kind of the story Aww. on that. But like I say, how how the Davids explained it to me was very amicable, and I was very okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it's hard not to. It's hard to do it without um, trying to put your own. Yeah, you need to see the vision of the like product, you, you, yeah, you want to see the as a t- you want to try and be a team player in what will work for every everything in that regard, mm. not just where's my death scene gone. Well, but no, but you also want <laughs> to honor the characters that so many people love and we've been on this huge journey with. That's why I was always so upset that they didn't have a funeral for Dumbledore because it's like all he did, all he meant to Harry, all he gave. Well, no, we <sighs> we we recorded one, didn't we? But it wasn't there wasn't a coffin or anything. No, we had um the ones up thing. No, no, we did. We did one in the Great Hall. You're, you're messing with me. We did. Because I wasn't I invited. We did. We did, we did no. one in the Great Hall. What? Yeah, I remember no, I'd didn't. cry. I remember. I remember I'd eucalypts in my eyes. No, cry. this is one of those things where you're pretending, aren't you? No, they did. But there was no. But there wasn't a coffin there because, yeah, it was like a memorial. It was like a memorial. No. Why wasn't I there? You were there. I wasn't. I'm sure you were. You would have been there. <laughs> no, we definitely did that thing where we all had to put our wands up and they CGI tears onto me because the scene wasn't sad enough. But we didn't have a memorial. We did. We definitely did. It was all lined up. Because Show they it got, to me. What? They took, they, took, right, they took away all the tables in the Great Hall and then put all the benches like horizontally. And then staggered it back, so it was almost like a traditional. And what? Michael Gambon well. was on a plinth or something. No, he wasn't there. No, he was no. It was it was it was like a memorial service, so there wasn't a coffin or anything like that there. Are you sure you're referring to the right film? Is it in the film? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know. We're going to have to edit this because I haven't seen this film in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is hilarious. No. No, because I even went to David Heyman's office as a fan. I was like, right, got to speak up for my community. And I was like, really need, Dumbledore really needs to have a funeral. In the books, he has mermaids, he has centaurs, everyone, the whole wizarding community unites and gives him a send off. And David Heyman was like, it's just too expensive. And I was, I actually was like, take some of my paycheck because I think it's worth it. And he was like, it wouldn't cover it. <laughs> you know, what, Oliver, we weren't, it, we wouldn't have been there because Fred and George have left Hogwarts at that point. There you go. I Who would have we... been there because I was working on the crew. 
Yeah, it didn't am happen. Am I thinking about no? Am I thinking you about the Goblet of Fire? Very probably. Are you thinking about Cedric Diggory? Yeah, I think I am. Okay, yeah, that's definitely there's definitely a moment. Remember? Cedric yeah, I think Diggory. that's what I'm getting confused from. Yeah, yeah, because the Dumbledore scene was the one where we did it outside, wasn't it? Yes, outside. The one that Ivana remembers, yeah. Yeah, and that so. was a, a reshoot, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you had me going there whoa <laughs> anyway aside aside from that one what was your favorite scene to shoot oh um <laughs> favorite scene ever oh i love the wedding scenes so much fun i really loved group scenes because you could get lost in it and forget it was a movie or a scene and there was so much going on especially like those older actors with the beards they mm. were just very interesting people to talk to weren't they because mm -hmm. they were they were muggle wizards really like they were they had those odd personalities and like so they were interesting and also i loved being on set with my dad my my love good dad uh risa fans because it was so nice because i think i was so used to being you know the one the character who sticks out a little bit she's always wearing bright purple and turquoise and things and then I saw him, I remember seeing him for the first time and he was dressed in his yellow robes and I just felt this like, oh, I really felt, dad, that's him. And so it was very nice to have someone, yeah, a, another love good on the set. And we did that little dance together yeah, dancing, and it, yeah. it was just very playful. Yeah. And I didn't feel the pressure from other scenes when you've got like a big scene. Yeah. That was fun. I, I almost ruined that scene. How so? Before it started, because you, do you remember how that was for Bill and Fleur's wedding, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was in like a big tent. And I tripped on one of the guy ropes, one of the guide ropes outside of the <gasps> tent. And I tripped and fell onto another one and almost pulled two or three of them out as I went. Oh my gosh. You and almost I brought the tent down. Near, well, I, I could have done. And it was you very embarrassing because, you, you know, yeah, exactly. But you know, when you try and style something off and you think no one's seen it. <laughs> But then half the crew were obviously watching. And they're like, oh my! Luckily, they quickly ran to help out the situation. I don't think anyone was any the wiser, but yeah. I definitely uh, I looked a bit sheepish for the rest of that day. Mm. Oh my gosh! And there was always a million eyes on, on you. Like whatever, if you moved your hair, there'd be someone go. <laughs> like, yep. You weren't. You didn't belong to yourself <laughs> on the set. <laughs> but what was it? So when the you know when the first when say the fifth film came out, and you started to get recognized from people you start getting i assume getting, getting fan mail and stuff like that what was that transition like was that almost like did you have any prep work as to uh oh, this may happen or this may happen or is it just a case of wow here it is yeah not really and i wish that was the only thing like they were so protective of us and so nice and they really helped us with all the press stuff um but I wish there had been more help on like just how to manage your life and around people. Um, I think I went to a summer camp the summer that the movie came out and that was when it really changed because I before I was just so used to being the odd one and you'd find your odd other people in the crowd and they would be your friends and at this summer camp everyone was really interested in me and really nice to me and I suddenly found whoa I've got too many friends and that was a bit of like a high at first because when you are not a popular kid and suddenly you are you're you just yeah I think I, I I overdid it a bit and I probably um I was so naive I I just there were a lot of people who were just you know not real friends but I just tried to be friends with everyone and then I think after some time, it does make you more wary. Like you, 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 mm. you aren't as open or as naive as you can't be because otherwise people will take advantage of you. Um, and I think, yeah, after, uh, and I'm still like this. If I meet someone and they are way too nice to me or way too eager to be friends, I'm like, you stay there, you know? Um, so that was a process. Cause yeah, at first I wasn't. And so I, yeah, I let in a lot of people who were just not the right people to be hanging out with um but then and yeah fan mail god that's a whole other thing i wish somebody had taught me how to do fan mail it was nobody did everyone kind of did it themselves um but when i first started writing to them i would i would spend hours because i would be like i know how much it meant to me because i used to write to jk rowling and she wrote back to me like that's a whole other story but um 
I know how much it means to get a letter or to get even Dan Radcliffe's form letter. It was just, it made your day. It was so special. It gave you hope um, for your own dreams. So I would spend a very long time writing emails back to people. No, not emails, letters. Mm. And then it got to a point where it was like, oh, I'm spending more time on fan mail than I am with my friends. So I think there has to be a boundary. And, And I do find it hard to engage with fan mail and not give too much of myself. I find it hard to even do like, you know, a, a polite message because it feels kind of cold. So now my dad does it and he loves it because he's such a people person. He loves making people happy um, and he doesn't get as involved with them. Yeah, mm. he's great. So if anyone ever gets fan mail from me, it's because of my dad. He's great. Yeah, I think that, as you say, you need to have someone managing it because we, uh, we, we James and I were very lucky. Our, our granddad, um, took up the mantle of that like when it first started coming in he was like right okay let's do that and he had a full order he'd, he'd say to us right okay we need to do you need to sign this many stuff for people this and year i've gone through it and then when he unfortunately passed away my uh, his wife my nan took up the mantle and then she did it wow she did it for years and years afterwards as well and then unfortunately when when she passed away it kind of without sounding horrible to people who write to us it kind of lost the the magic doing yeah. it like that was it was such a nice thing to do and it was just like they were very structured in how they did things especially well especially nan when she did it it was very much a case of right okay if there isn't a self self stamped envelope or a um reply coupon sorry we're not doing that one um this person, and that type of thing and it was just nice to it was it was amazing to share people with that as well i think because my well my granddad he, he fought in um in, in the Second World War over in the Far East. And it was amazing how the the fan mail that we received from, from Japan, obviously, you know, the, he grew up fighting those, those, uh, the Japanese, and it totally changed his perception of Japanese people and culture. Wow, and really? It's, 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 yes, oh, cool. it's, it's amazing that it does that, because I always remember him saying, you know, in terms of politeness and in terms of just the yeah. calligraphy and the... <gasps> The care Attentive they put into their exactly, letters is yeah. so beautifully done. Yeah, exactly. So my too. dad has a system like that. He ranks them in order of politeness. He has one to five. And actually, and please, your listeners, don't take this the wrong way. I absolutely love France. I love French people. But the fan mail has made my dad prejudiced against France, French people <laughs> because <laughs> because they're always so direct. They say what they want. I want two photos of you. Thank you very much. And so he literally like we'll be doing fan mail. He goes. Now another French one. He'd be like, and it's like, Dad, that person is speaking a second language, and they're also ten years old. But it's made him really, um, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't get, have much time for the French fan letters now. I'm sorry to say, but I do fight for them. I do try and get them put back be, in the nice pile. People of France, people of France. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. I was going to say, your dad is amazing, though, Evie. He's oh, so get- great. I yeah. cannot wait until after lockdown. I still am coming to a hurling game with him. <gasps> he would love it. He Honestly, was so that's, set that's on, on that. my list. Please go. He would love it. And he also, he's just a really fun person to go to those matches with because he goes crazy. He screams and whoops and everything. He's very ebullient, uh, passionate about that. And yeah, and he was set. I remember you said that and he was so excited. He was like, I think he's really going to come. So mm. please do go. He would love so it. Guys, thank you very much for listening for part one here with Evie Lynch. We're having such a good time. We're going to split this into two. So part two will be round the corner next week. So please check that out. Until then, thank you for listening. Stay safe and see you then.